Welcome to this latest edition of Europe Now on France 24. With me, Catherine Nicholson, and welcome to Catalonia. It's the land of Dali, Gaudi, Pep Guardiola, mountains, seaports, and the Sagrada Familia. It's the region of northeastern Spain that punches above its weight, economically speaking, producing around a fifth of Spain's overall GDP. This in a region that's slightly smaller than Switzerland, with a population around the same size as that of Greater London. Well, those 7.5 million Catalans have just opened a new chapter in their separatism story. On December 21st, a record number of voters turned out for a regional election that many billed as an unofficial independent referendum. The result, though, has perhaps thrown up as many questions as it has answers. That's because more voters cast their ballots for the anti-independence parties, 52% to 48. However, thanks to the proportional voting system here in Catalonia, the pro-independence factions have won more seats and absolute majority in the regional parliament. We will be asking where Catalonia goes from here, but also zooming out to look at the bigger picture, the history of Catalonia, its culture, its relations with Madrid. First, though, let's uh, take a look back at some of the key takeaways from election night itself. For these Catalonian separatist supporters, it's a time to celebrate. The majority won by pro-independence parties opens a new uncertain chapter for the region. From self-imposed exile in Brussels, a defiant Carlos Puigdemont hailed the result as a victory for Catalonia. The Spanish government has been defeated. Rajoy and his allies have lost. They've received a slap in the face from the Catalan voters. They wanted to legalize the coup d'etat of Article 155, but Catalans don't want anything to do with it. Throughout the day, snaking queues formed outside polling stations as the election registered a record 82% turnout. Some exiled pro-independence leaders, like Puigdemont, had to cast their votes by proxy, while others, such as former Catalan deputy Oriol Junqueras, had to vote from behind bars. And if the poll's outcome largely favors the independence movement, the single party which won the most votes and the most seats was the unionists, Ciudadanos. It has been made very clear with this result that the social majority in Catalonia is in favor of the union with the rest of Spain and with Europeans. It was a bittersweet celebration for Ciudadanos supporters, as the party's 37 seats aren't enough to form a regional government. The Unionist Party won today, but tomorrow the separatists are going to reach a deal and form a majority. Right now we won and we're happy, but soon it will go back to the way it was. Pro-independence parties won 70 seats between them, less than they did two years ago, but enough to give them a slim majority in parliament. Yet past squabbles suggest forming a coalition won't be an easy task. The election's biggest loser, meanwhile, was Mariano Rajoy, whose conservative People's Party came in last with just three seats. Both camps hoped Thursday's vote would give them a clear mandate over the region. Instead, it only seems to have added to the reigning uncertainty in Catalonia. Well, let's zoom our view of this story out now, away from the nitty gritty of the political process and look at some of the broader issues surrounding Catalonia's regional identity. Uh, we've come to Barrio Gracia in Barcelona. It's a neighborhood that, as you can see from all the banners and flags adorning the buildings, wears its Catalan identity firmly on its sleeve. We are here to meet a local resident who also happens to be a member of the European Parliament. Yes. Hello, nice to meet you, Ernesto Urtasso. Nice meeting you, welcome. Thank you, thanks for bringing us here to Barrio Gracia. Now, you're with the uh, Catalonia in Common Party, yes. that's right. Yes, correct. Uh, can you tell us, what does being Catalan mean to you? 
Well, I've bo I, I was born here, so it's a place where uh, national identities are very mixed. There's people that really feel Catalan and want to be dependent. There are other people like me who f have a more mixed identity. So it's a very interesting place, I think, which is now under a huge political crisis mm. because uh, our, the current institutional arrangement does not satisfy a majority of Catalans. Now, does being Catalonian, feeling Catalonian, necessarily imply wanting independence? No, I think that's not the case. I'm not an independentist myself. Uh, as I was uh, saying before, I mean, I think there's a growing feeling for independence. There are many people in this neighborhood, there are a lot of people that are pro-independence. But there are others that also feel attached to the rest of Spain. So I think Catalonia is also a place where the national feelings are really mixed. So, uh, and there's a lot of support for independence, but of course, this is not the 100% major the, the, the of society. I mean, Catalonia is a very diverse society as well. And if we look at some of the issues as well, there is a perception that this is a rich region. People from here don't like seeing their money being spent in other parts of Spain, particularly other parts of Spain where there might be corruption, political mismanagement. Is that a fair view? Is it widely held? Well, I don't think that everything that happens in Catalonia is only linked uh, to a, a, a malaise uh, linked with um, the management of money and finances. Uh, or corruption or whatever. I think that in Catalonia also the, the political problem is linked to the recognition of its national identity within the Spanish state. So of course there are issues related to investment, to management of money, to of course uh, uh, a, a, a region that would like to have a new financial arrangement with Spain, but it's not only that. It's broader than this. It's really something about its national identity and its capacity of being recognized as such in the Spanish constitution. Okay, well, uh, a strong identity, you're not an independentist yourself. What then would be your vision, ideally, for Catalonia? Well, in, uh, in, in five years' time, uh, I, I would like to see this, this, uh, this country uh, um, um, that has managed to overcome the political crisis, uh, that we managed to have a new institutional arrangement with Spain, federal, confederal, uh, where Spain rec has more recognition about what Catalonia means and is. And also I would like to see uh, Catalonia as it has always been, as a real engine for European integration. This has always been a pro-European region and uh, I would like to see Catalonia in five years also uh, playing a very, very strong role also in Europe. Okay, well thank you so much. That's given us so many insights into Catalonia. Really nice to meet you, Ernesto. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And uh, as this region eyes the future with perhaps some ambivalence, let's take you a little bit deeper into the past. Many people here in Catalonia would argue that there's been a centuries-long struggle for independence, but nothing's ever quite that straightforward, is it? Our reporters Isabel Romero and Anaïs Gerard have been finding out more. Here in the courtyard of the University of Barcelona, the cause of Catalan independence sparks passionate discussions. All kinds of political organizations have tried to perpetuate our culture, our identity, by fighting against state repression during the Franco regime and the civil war, for instance. The sense of national identity has always existed. We can trace it back to the War of Succession in 1714. On September 11th, Catalans celebrate their national holiday, known as La Diada. It commemorates the fall of Barcelona in 1714 during Spain's War of Succession. King Philip V centralized the country and lifted Catalonia's regional sovereignty. For the pro-independence camp, it was the beginning of the oppression against the Catalan people, a point of view many historians dispute. There's a commonly shared view of history that says Catalonia was never part of Spain and that Spain has occupied Catalonia for 300 years. But that's simply not true. From a historical point of view, this is unfounded. On the contrary, there's a Catalan political tradition of participating in the central government as ministers under the monarchy and under the republic. The 19th century saw the rise of fierce nationalism 
but in 1932, with the Second Republic, Spain voted in favor of granting Catalonia regional autonomy as well as their own parliament. The civil war that opposed Spanish Republicans and the Franco regime would change the course of history. When the war started, the vision of left-wing Catalan nationalism was that if the Republic wins, Spain will become a federation or a confederation, and that within this confederation, Barcelona and Catalonia would have a status equivalent to Madrid or Castille. And that's what they want, because Catalan nationalism believes in federalism. While Catalonia held out against General Franco and stood with the Republicans until 1939, the nationalist unity would soon fall apart. During the Civil War, what characterized Catalan nationalism was this split between two distinct blocs. On the one hand, there were the conservatives and the Roman Catholics who belonged to the business elite, the upper middle classes that supported Franco, not because of their ideological conviction, but because they were persecuted by the revolutionary anarchists in Catalonia. About 8,000 people, religious people in particular, were killed. On the other hand, the only strand of nationalism that persisted in Catalonia during the Civil War was the left leftist one, the moderate left of Esquerra Republicana, which still exists today. Following his victory and during his 40-year rule, Franco crushed the Catalan language and culture. After his death, a new constitution was voted in 1978 and restored Catalonia's autonomous status, giving it jurisdiction over matters related to language, education, administration and taxes. In the past 10 years, demands for independence have resurfaced once again, mostly due to Madrid's refusal to reform Catalonia's status, but other issues are also at stake. It's probably linked to other phenomena in Europe. In the face of the European integration crisis, there is a resurgence of the nation state, just like in the 19th century. The other one is economic. The financial crisis is a fundamental element. This crisis has only fed the anger of separatists who believe Catalonia would be better off on its own, revealing a deep divide within the Catalonian society. La vicisette en parlava de bon matí al portal mentre el sol espera Well, we've traveled around about an hour's drive outside of Barcelona to the historic town of Caldes de Montbui, which predates the region of Catalonia and the Kingdom of Spain. It's home to these very impressive Roman baths and the town's mayor is an ardent supporter of independence, I understand. Hello, Jordi Soleil, nice to Hello. meet you. Hello, welcome. Thank you very much. Now, uh, you're an MEP with the Esquerra Republicana Party. Mm -hmm. We've just been hearing in our report about how Catalonia's relationship to independence has evolved over time. Uh, can you tell us, have you yourself always been for Catalan independence? I became a supporter of Catalan independence when I was 16. Uh, at, that time, at that time I was uh, in the high school and we decided together with a group of uh, students to set up kind of a uh, group for independence. Uh, at that time, I'm, I'm talking about around the year 92, 93, uh, we were a clear minority, mm -hmm. uh, but things have changed a lot. And, and now, at least, we are uh, half of the population in favor of independence. Well, let's go inside the town's museum then and find out a bit more about how culture plays into the independence picture. Okay, let's go. Well, can you just tell us a little bit about uh, who are the artists whose works we can see in the museum here? These are works uh, from uh, Manolo Gué, who uh -huh. was a uh, famous Catalan artist who happened to live here in Caldas and Montbui for a long time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, it's clear that uh, Catalonia at large has a very strong cultural identity, but is it so strong that it needs to be independent? Can one really say Catalonia is an oppressed region? Uh, I don't think we are an oppressed uh, country, uh, but I, I do think that uh, all peoples and nations have the right to decide uh, their own political future. And of course, having an own 
culture, and our own language, and our own identity, that, that helps. But this is not the only argument to go for independence. The main argument is that we are convinced that by getting independence, we will have the best means to improve our, our country, our society, to make Catalonia a fairer and more prosperous country. How far do you think you would go to try and achieve independence? How many referendums would you have? Uh, the, the polling does seem to indicate that a majority of people still do not back independence. First of all, I am a democrat, and then, then I am for independence. So I think that the only way to achieve independence is through democratic means and uh, by showing that there is a majority in favour of that independence. So this means no more illegal referendums. Uh, you would follow the process that Madrid has been talking about, the central government, that this would have to be debated in the national parliament, the constitution amended, and then perhaps a referendum could happen. Our priority has always been a legal and agreed referendum. That wasn't what happened in October? That didn't happen in October because uh, the Spanish government uh, never wanted to sit around the table and talk and negotiate about the possibility of Catalonia exercising our right to self-determination through a referendum. Uh, but we have tried uh, as many times as 16 times uh, during the last two years. Uh, Partido Popular and the other parties supporting uh, this uh, strategy mm -hmm. of Mr. Rajoy never wanted to have talks about that. Well, thank you very much for giving us your point of view. Uh, Jordi Sele, great to meet you. It's been a pleasure, thank you. And uh, we have, of course, heard from several Catalan voices now. I think it's time we got the view from Madrid. Do stay with us, part two coming up after the news update.